In this lecture, we'll talk about deformers. First, let's take a look at nonlinear deformers. Nonlinear deformers can be accessed by going to create deformers, nonlinear. Let's separate this so that we can go through each of them. I'll go ahead and create a cube. I'm going to increase its height. So for height, I will give something like, let's say, 20. And I will also increase some height divisions, something like 20. Now, keep in mind, having the higher level of smoothness will be better for you to get good deformations. And after, once you have added the divisions, now I can start applying each of them. So I'll start with bend. So make sure that you select the object that you want to bend and apply bend. Now, just by applying, you don't see any difference because it basically adds a bend deformer inside this object. We can find this if we go to the inputs area. So there it says bend 1. I'll click on that and we have some attributes that we can modify. I'll apply curvature. So I'll select it here in the label and use my middle mouse button, which will basically bend your object. Now this works for any object that you have. Whatever object you have, you can just apply a bend. It will help you to bend the object. So let's say if I give something like 4, let's say 3.5, so that gives you a perfect circle from a straight cube. We can also control how this bend should influence, meaning that how much it should influence. So if I increase this low bound, as you can see, it is basically disabling the bend in the lower half. And I can also do the same thing by decreasing the value for high bound. So that will basically not bend from the top so that you can, you've got a big curvature value but still you don't have any bend because these low bound and high bound will decide how much should be bent. Now we can also push this down by select, uh, choosing the move tool and pushing it down we can also decide about how this bench or which from which point you want the bend to apply. So we can also push it up so that we get just this little top portion to be bent. And finally envelope will basically decide how much the effect should be applied. So if the envelope is 1, the bend will have 100% effect. If I make it 0, it will not have any influence on the uh, mesh that we have. So I'll make this envelope 1 and we can just modify these bend to suit uh, different requirements. So that's bend deformer. Let me go ahead and delete that so that your object comes back to its original shape. And we can also apply a flare. So flare, what it does is it has uh, x, x and y, x and z values so that you can decide it on one side or the other side. So I'd like to give same value for both the sides. And we also have start flare and end flare. So start flare basically decides the shape of the bottom and end flare will decide the top. So let me give something like 5, 5 here to the top. So a little bit less in the top. And we, can, we also have a curve that decides how should it behave in the middle. So it should be bending in or pushing out. Okay, now these are some uh, tools that you can use while modeling also. So for example, uh, if I delete my uh, flare that I have, it will go back to its original shape. But rather, instead of deleting it, if I delete the history information of this object, so for example, if I go to choose delete by type history, it basically removes the flare effect that we have applied and makes this mesh in its final shape. So that means like now you cannot go back to its original shape. So it's being finalized with the shape. So if you want making any model for something like a tower or building or something like that, you can use flare to create uh, these nice good good looking results uh, within seconds. And once you finish you can just delete the history so that your flare will go off. I'll undo that to get back the flare. And here also we have a high bound and low bound 
and we have the envelope and keep it something like 0.5 so that it keeps it halfway influenced and you can keep it 1 or 0 depending on your preferences. I'll go ahead and delete the history. Go to edit, delete by type, history. Now after flare I will apply a twist to see how this twist effect works on this object. So twist simply twists the object. So we've got a starting angle and ending angle. I'll, I'll increase that ending angle as you can see it basically twists, twists the object. Okay. Now the best part is you can also animate these attributes if you want. So I'll make it zero, for example, and uh, set key here. Key selected, and I can go to let's say 25 frames, maybe 50 frames, and apply something like 360 degrees. So it makes a complete 360 degree rotation in 50 frames. So you can see that you can create this kind of animation also. Okay, so if you want to create uh, or maintain the same pose, you can also I'll get rid of this keyframe, break connection. Uh, if you want to maintain this pose, you can also delete the uh, history information of this uh, object so that it will get rid of the twist, but maintaining the same pose. So I can go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. Okay, so it's being finalized like that. Let's apply a squash on top of this. What basically squash does is, as it says, so you can just go ahead and increase this factor so it will basically stretch or squeeze the object. And finally we have got sine and wave. Sine can be applied if you have uh, some uh, if you have something like flag or cloth that you want to animate to create something like a wave so I'll go ahead and apply uh, I'll go ahead and create a plane make it bigger make it a little thinner rotate it 90 degrees okay make it bigger now Keep in mind the more number of divisions you have the better it is. So I'm going to make create wave like this so I'll just increase more divisions this way. So that's 50. Good. So I'm going to apply a sign on top of this. Now as you can see that when I apply the sign it creates vertically but I want to rotate it horizontally. But before that let's find out how, what kind of axis we have for this rotation. So let's go to sign and we have amplitude and wavelength. These are the two things basically decides how big of a wave you want to have. I will increase the amplitude. So you can see that it creates a wave like so. So let's just push it down. I will choose the rotation tool. Let's rotate it in x-axis. Let's go ahead and give minus 90 degrees. Okay, so that's perfect for us to have the wave. I'll go to sine. Amplitude is good enough. Now we can also decide the wavelength. So let me just decrease the wavelength so that we will have a lot of waves. Okay, good enough. Let me also decrease the amplitude because this is too much of amplitude. I'll give a value of 0 0.05, maybe less than that, Point zero 0.04. Okay, maybe I will just increase this wavelength a little bit more. Okay, that's good, I think. So once we are satisfied, we can also we can animate this offset value that I can just increase this value, let's say. Okay, so that will create the wave. So let's go ahead and give zero here. And let's just increase this to 50 or 100. Okay, so I'll create a keyframe, key selected, go to 100, and let's make it minus 10 or something like that. Let's just play that back. Yes, so that creates the animation. So let me see if I can give a higher value, something like minus 20, yes. So it should be f slower.
Okay, so depending on the kind of animation you want, you can create keyframes. And last but not least, we also have wave. This basically creates the ripple effect. And I will apply wave. So I'll go ahead again. We have both amplitude and wavelength. So let me give something like 0 0.5, 0 0.05, okay. and wavelength of 0.2. Yes. I'll give more of a 0 0.02, 0 0.005. Okay, so that looks good. So here also we can animate the offset, which would help us to create this ripple effect. So these are all called nonlinear deformers. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the other types of deformers.